Good. Yeah. Community health, take four. I'm Dr. Patrick Culligan. I'm the co-director of urogynecology and reconstructive pelvic surgery for the Valley Hospital. Urogynecology is a field of medicine. It's a specialty under OBGYN, and we take care of women that have quality of life issues. These are pelvic floor disorders, such as urinary incontinence and pelvic organ prolapse. Any or all of the pelvic organs can be involved in a prolapse, and that can be really tough for patients to visualize. So I developed an app that I use every day with patient education. So we can see in, as though we're looking in um, uh, from the side to the anatomy, and I can show normal anatomy and then, and then the various types of prolapse that are individually um, present with each patient. So the right time to see a doctor is when you have a persistent problem that's bothersome to you. It doesn't matter whether you've had it for a really long time or just a relatively short time. Uh, because oftentimes what you need is just a little coaching about the pelvic floor muscles and something called Kegel exercises and learning how to strengthen those muscles. Stress urinary incontinence is the type of leakage that a woman might have when she's coughing, laughing, sneezing, uh, something like that. And so it's a spurt of urine that comes out when uh, a patient is um, doing some of those physical activities. The problem of stress urinary incontinence often happens as a result of childbirth. So um, even with a normal um, vaginal delivery, injuries can occur to the ligaments and uh, the pelvic floor muscles that support the urethra and the bladder in a way that uh, allows for women to develop stress urinary incontinence. In a normal situation, the pressure from those activities instantaneously hits this part of the body, which is the supportive area around the urethra, and the urine would be staying in because of what we call the continence mechanism, which is a set of muscles and ligaments that kind of work uh, instantaneously in, in response to any of those activities. However, when there's a little bit of damage over time, there's a loss of support. That's what this is meant to represent right here. And this extra mobility that's developed along the urethra allows for urine to, to just kind of spurt out instantaneously like this. It's a very bothersome problem. The mainstay of treatment uh, initially would be learning and, and doing Kegel exercises. We see patients all the time who just really need to learn how to strengthen their pelvic floor muscles after giving birth, and often these problems go away on their own with a little bit of exercise. When that doesn't work, a lot of women will choose to have surgery to correct this problem, and it's a relatively minor surgery. The surgery involves placement of a, of a very small mesh sling underneath the urethra, and it sits there loosely, and it uh, stops the urine leakage just when those activities are happening, such as coughing, laughing, sneezing. So the sling sits underneath the urethra here, and then the urethra does that little motion, and the bearing down actually pushes the urethra gently into the sling, which stops the leakage. This is done through a vaginal incision, and it's done under local anesthesia with some sedation. And I can actually set the tension of the device with the patient awake at the end of the surgery. That's why we do it under local anesthesia, so that I can wake the patient up in the middle of the surgery and have her do the coughing or an activity that would make her leak. And then I can set the tension accordingly. So it can be very precise that way. Pelvic organ prolapse is a relaxation or a bulging or really a herniation of um, the pelvic organs into and through the vagina in a way that creates kind of a bulging sensation or a pressure sensation. Probably the most common type of, of prolapse is what people call a dropped bladder. So it's when the bladder itself is sort of bulging down. It looks like this. Here we have the pubic bone in the front and the bladder filled with urine and the uterus and the vagina and the rectum in their normal position when everything's well supported. And when you have prolapse of the bladder, it bulges down just like that. But when we say that someone has a dropped bladder, it's not usually just the bladder. Usually some of the other organs are relaxing as well and the bladder just is the one leading the way. So you can see the uterus is coming down here and so is the rectum and that's oftentimes what we see. Uterine prolapse is very common. That's when the, the uterus itself is the thing that's uh, bulging out the most. When it's very bad, it looks like this. That's the stage four, the worst it can be. So someone might start out with a bulge that they barely feel, and then it gets worse and worse and worse.
A person doesn't really need treatment for a pelvic organ prolapse unless they're bothered by it. So let's say you go to um, your, your gynecologist and they tell you that the bladder seems to be dropping a bit. If you're unaware of it and don't have any symptoms, you really don't need any treatment except maybe um, preventing it from getting any worse by doing your Kegel exercises, for example. But when pelvic organ prolapse gets to be really uncomfortable, it's causing a bulging sensation or it's uh, making you not be able to do the physical activities that you want to do, that's when it's time to seek help. And we have both uh, surgical and non-surgical approaches for the treatment of pelvic organ prolapse. Uh, when they choose surgery, we, we essentially only offer minimally invasive approaches. These would be either laparoscopic or with or without robotic assistance or a vaginal uh, approach to surgery. We really don't do any um, large open incisions anymore to, to correct these problems. Just like with urinary incontinence, the time to see a doctor for pelvic organ prolapse is when it's bothering you. And actually, it doesn't usually bother patients until the prolapse is bulging towards the outside. So a woman doesn't really have to wonder whether they have this problem. They're going to know. They'll be the first to know. It's going to be something bulging beyond the opening of the vagina in a way that's uncomfortable. If you have or you know of someone with uh, these pelvic floor disorders like I'm talking about, then please contact the Valley Medical Group Urogynecology Department and we'd be happy to help you.